Hello, my name is Jeff Maeda, and I'm the community manager here at Wheeled VR. And I'm here to show you how to set up your one stock. We've got a lot of cool stuff to cover in this video, and there are going to be timestamps down below if you would like to jump to a specific feature. But if you're new to the Wheeled VR one stock, I highly recommend watching this video from start to finish as we go over how to get the maximum performance out of your one stock. First, let's take a look at the box and its contents. The one stock is shipped in a custom made box full of graphics and information. And if you look closely, a couple Easter eggs too. On the inside of the box, you'll find the one stock with your VR systems controller mounts pre-installed and a bag containing a sling, a hex wrench and extra O-rings for the bi-hole friction mounts. Go ahead and remove the one stock from the box and on the back, take off the plastic packaging supports and go ahead and discard these. The one stock comes in its most compact form with the rear stock and the dominant hand controller mount all pushed together towards the frame's flip latch up here. The buttstock frame is set to its shortest setting and the front sling mount, this guy back here, is installed at the back. To set up the one stock, loosen the wing nuts for the sling mount, the stock mount, and the rear controller mount and remove all three from the frame and reinstall the sling mount so it's next to the frame's flip latch up here in front of the rear controller mount. So we pull both of these off, gives you a nice little space to remove the front mounting point as well as remove the buttstock completely. We'll just loosen up the rear dominant hand controller mount, slip that off, and then we'll slip the front mounting point right in between. And after you reinstall the front sling mount, go ahead and reinstall the rear controller mount and the buttstock. And don't over tighten these wing nuts, just finger tight's fine. This is a great time to show how easy it is to swap controller mounts depending on whether you prefer to have a right hand or a left hand in the rear of the stock. We ship all one stocks with the right hand as the rear controller mount, and they are also marked left hand and right hand in case they get mixed up. To switch the controller mounts, remove the buttstock and the rear controller mount as we did earlier, but also remove the front controller mount. As you can see, the bottom of the controller mounts are identical and can freely swap positions. So to make this a left hand dominant one stock, just install the left hand controller mount at the rear of the one stock. And then reinstall the buttstock and the right controller mount at the front of the frame. And now you have a left hand dominant one stock. This process takes no tools and can be done in under 60 seconds. This is also the same process you'll use to change controller mounts to different VR systems. This is the bottom mount Quest 3 version, but this can also be swapped out for Valve Index, PSVR 2, HTC Vive controller mounts, and many, many more. So you can have one stock and many VR controller system supports. There are many ways to set the length of the one stock's frame. The frame has a flip latch that lets you adjust the length of the one stock and features a dial that controls the amount of tension needed to move the controller mount forward and backwards. And the buttstock frame has a push button system that locks it at different lengths. For bottom mounted versions like this Quest 3 controller mount system, you can also control the length of the one stock by adjusting where the rear stock mount is locked onto the frame. For younger gamers or players who want a more compact VR stock, move the buttstock and the controller mount closer to the flip latch, and this will create an overall shorter maximum length. This also has the benefit of letting you operate the flip latch with your pinky for some of the fastest possible length adjustments. For most players, we recommend a balanced frame length that can still be adjusted while in-game. First, set the buttstock frame to be three clicks from its shortest setting. And then, set your rear controller mount to your preferred location on the frame. 
then set the buttstock system so when you grab the rear controller mount, it sits right where your elbow bends. This will create a frame length that fits your body, but also has room to adjust with the buttstock's push button system for longer sniper rifles or for shorter submachine guns. For top mounted variants, like this PSVR2 controller mount system, we recommend setting the buttstock to be flush with the back of the frame. This maximizes headset clearance. And then, Set the controller mount so that it doesn't hit the stock mount. And then use the push button adjustment on the buttstock to create the perfect length and fit. To set the cheek rest height, squeeze the button at the back of the buttstock frame and then slide the cheek rest up or down. We recommend, while in-game, if you want to adjust the height of the cheek rest, to use your forward hand to come back, squeeze the button, and then use your shoulder to adjust the height. When using the controller mounts, make sure you have the left and right grips mounted in your preferred orientation. You can check which controller mount is which by the RH and LH labels at the base of the controller mounts. The controllers will slot into the mounts and will fit in slightly differently depending on your VR system. The controllers are held in place on the one stock with your pinky and your ring finger and the base of your thumb. The one stock is held up by lightly pressing it against your shoulder. You do not need to squeeze the controller mounts to hold up the one stock as the light pulling motion keeps it in place. You can tilt and pivot the controller mounts freely to adjust their positions. The tilt tension is controlled by the wing nut right below the controller, and the pivot tension is controlled by a screw at the base of the controller mount by using the provided hex wrench. We recommend having the tension set so the controllers will not move during normal gameplay, but can still be adjusted with a little extra force, allowing you to calibrate while in game. The tension can also be increased to lock the controller mounts in place so they will not move. Great for esports or locking in your favorite setup. The sling is one of the most important parts of the one stock, but why? The one stock has been engineered to have multiple sling mount points that control how the stock rests when it's not in use. It is vital to set up the sling correctly so that it's comfortable, fast to adjust, and easy to retake the one stock. The sling has two push button connectors, a one point adapter, length adjustment, and a quick adjustment pole loop. There are many ways to set up the sling in either one point or two point configurations. One point sling setups are simple, fast, and gives you a lot of room by not impeding your hands, but can be a little less consistent in the rest position. Two point sling setups give you more consistency over how it returns to rest after releasing the one stock and more stability while not in use. To create a one point sling, attach the sling mount from one side to the adapter above the wheeled VR logo by pressing in the button, inserting it, and then rotating it to lock it into position. You can attach it to either side, and this controls which side the length adjustment is on. The one stock has nine different sling mount points, allowing for an immense amount of options to suit your preferences and play styles. There are two on the cheek rest, one at the base of the buttstock, two on the buttstock frame, two on the rear stock mount, one on the back of the frame, and one on the movable front mount. The mounting points on the back of the frame and on the buttstock frame allow the sling to freely rotate, while all other mounting points will lock, preventing rotation. Whether you like one point or two point configurations, the sling can be worn around the neck or under the arm. Here are some of our favorite sling setups. Let's start with using a one point sling. For bottom mounted controller systems like this Quest 3 version, one good spot for a single point sling setup is at the top of the cheek rest. The one stock will rest at an angle and a little higher allowing both hands to be able to pick it up. The second setup is connecting the sling to the buttstock frame near the cheek rest adjustment button. The one stock hangs straight down and can be scooped up with your dominant hand. Another great spot is attaching to the rear stock mount. The one stock will rest at an angle and it keeps the dominant hand controller mount in a stable position.
This setup also sits higher and works well if you like to have a looser sling. For top mounted controller systems like this PSVR2 version, we like to attach the sling to the rear stock mount. This will rest vertically and the height can be adjusted by loosening or tightening the sling. For two point sling setups, we recommend using any of the rear sling mounting points combined with the front sling mount. You can move the front sling mount along the frame to adjust the balance. Depending on if you're using a top mounted or bottom mounted variant, each sling combination will sit slightly differently. Experiment to see what fits your playstyle. And if you're feeling extra spicy, you can remove the rear stock entirely and connect the sling directly to the frame, creating an ultra lightweight compact system. Thank you for checking out this one stock introduction video. For more information about our products, visit wheelvr.com. And be sure to join our Discord in the links down below where our team is always available. Next time, we'll talk about how to adjust the one stock in game to get perfect calibration in seconds.